Suppose a town has a population of 4,500 in 2015. By 2022, the population has grown to 5,030 people. All right, so we've got a growth situation here. Initially, just from this information, it could be linear growth or it could be exponential growth. I can write either equation from this form. Uh, the problem here is specific about which type of growth it wants you to use. It says if the town's population has been growing exponentially, identify the rate of change, write an exponential growth model, and then predict the population in 2030. All right. So in this case, I know an exponential growth model, the general form looks like this. P is equal to A times 1 plus R to the nth power. So what I want to try to do here is identify the A and the R that's specific so that I can write that exponential growth model. Now, if you look up here, I can identify the A value. Our A is our starting value. In this case, I have a couple of different numbers, a couple of situations here, right? Um, this is the older value, so I think of that as my starting value. So I'm starting with 4,500 people in my town, and so that's going to be my A value. Because this is my starting value and this is 2015, my N is going to be measuring the number of years since 2015, because that's my starting year. And P, of course, is measuring the town's population, which is what I'm trying to find out about. However, at this point, when I go to put in R, I'm not given any percentage values here. So I'm just going to leave R here in my equation as an unknown for now. And this is the information that I have. When we calculated rates of change for linear, we were just able to divide things up evenly because the growth was constant uh, every year. However, here, when it's growing by a constant percentage, the growth is small at the beginning and big at the end. So we have to solve uh, for the rate of change in a exponential function a little bit differently. How do we solve for it? Well, we're given, we have to be given some second piece of information that we know and that we can use that will work in this formula. I know that my formula should tell me that in 2022, the population should be 5,030 people. So this 5,030 is going to be my p-value. Still don't know r. And my n-value is going to be, remember, it's the number of years since 2015. I'm told what's happening in 2022. So if I do 2022 minus 2015, I find that that is seven years later. And so I can put seven in for the N. So here's my starting value. Seven years later, the population is 5,030. And now the only unknown value that I have is this one R. So I can use algebra to solve that equation. Uh, remember to get the R by itself. We have to get rid of everything that's on the same side of the equation. We have to get rid of the 4,500, the 1, and the 7. And of course, it does matter what order you do this in. So we always start by dividing each side by that A value. So we're going to divide by 4,500. It's the farthest thing away from the R. On the right-hand side, that just leaves me now with 1 plus R to the 7th power. Now I only have two things with the R. And on the right-hand side, or sorry, on the left-hand side, rather, I can just do that math. So it's 50, 30 divided by 4,500. And I get this 1.1777, 1 1.11, we'll call it 7, 8 on my paper. But keep in mind that I can just keep this whole expression in Desmos and use that answer and have the calculator retype it for me so I don't have to worry about making any mistakes. The next thing that I need to do is I'm looking at this equation. I still want to get the R by itself here. I have to get rid of the seventh power next. The opposite of a power is a root. So I'm going to take the seventh root of each side. On the right side, the seventh root and the seventh power go undo each other and leave me just with one plus R. And on the left side, I actually have to take the seventh root of that 1.1178 answer. 
there's our exponent a to the b power. We want the root right underneath the function right underneath it. Right here, we want to use that button to find the seventh root. So we're going to type seven up there in the top part. That says I want to do the seventh root. And then we want to put in this 1.1178. You can type everything in, or we can just use that ANS button, and it'll copy over the last answer um, that was in Desmos. So now what we have here is 1.016. Now the R is almost by itself. All I have to do is get rid of the one. It's being added, so I'm going to subtract one from each side. That leaves the R by itself on the right-hand side of the equation. And on the left-hand side of the equation, I just need to take that last answer. Oh, I didn't make sure that you hit enter. So you're on the next line. I want to take that last answer, the, the uh, 1.01603, and I want to subtract one from there. And I get 0 0.01603. We'll just leave that like that for our R. So what I've been able to do now is I've been able to find the R value. The first question up here if we were growing exponentially, we wanted to identify the rate of change. The rate of change comes from that R. However, if you want to talk about the rate of change of an exponential equation, we usually want to write it in its percentage form. To take a decimal and write it in percentage form, we're going to do the opposite of what we would do to take a percent and write it in decimal. So this, I'm going to move the decimal two to the right or times by 100, and that's going to give me 1.6%. And I can say that my town has been growing at a rate of 1.6% every year. So if I'm asking you for the rate of change, I want you to do it to solve for R and then identify that um, value in its percentage form, because that's the way we like to talk about rates of change. The next part of the equation asks us to write an exponential growth model for this situation. Well, we have this P equals A times 1 plus R to the N. And for a general equation, it's our job to identify the starting value and the rate of change in that equation. And I want my final equation model to still have P and N in it. So here, my A is that 4,500, which is the town's population in 2015. My rate, I just calculated, um, and I need the decimal version of it in my formula, so I'm going to put in 0 0.016, and then to the nth power. So this is my exponential equation model that we're looking for. The last part of the question asks us to predict the population in 2030. Well, that sounds like a year to me, and so I'm going to be needing to find the value for n to use. It's very important to remember that your years are based on whatever the starting value was. So in this case, my starting value is in 2015. So if I want to find my n value, I have to figure out how many years 2030 is since 2015. So I need to do that subtraction. In this case, I find that it's 15 years later. So I can put n equals 15 into my equation. P is equal to 4,500 times 1 plus 0 0.016 to the 15th power. Put that in for my n. And now I have just the P is already by itself, so I don't have to do any solving. I can just go straight to Desmos, and I can type that expression in um, my calculator. So if we do that, we can clear this out just to make it a little bit prettier. Uh, we're going to take 4,500, and then we're going to times that by 1 plus 0 0.016. Close the parentheses, and then take that to the 15th power. So we need to make sure that we hit that A to the B button so the cursor goes up into the exponent. We want the 15th power, and we can hit Enter, and we get 5,709.7. And so if you want to think of it that way, we can think of our population as going to be 5,710, right, because that'll round up that many people in the town in 2030. So if we continue to grow at that 1.6% every year, we'll end up with this many, whoop, this many people, 5,710 people.
in the town in 2030. Um, so that's the basic just for how we do this. If we're asking for the rate of change, we have to use this process here, putting in the second point that we know and solving. That rate can be written in percentage form if you want to talk about the rate of change, or we can just use that number as the R in the equation model if we're just trying to find the exponential equation model. And then once you have that, you can figure out any value that you want from there.